All right, cool. So that's my name, my contact details, and I'll be telling you how you can uh, mark C functions from C14 for testing. Now, why would we want to do this? Well, first of us, some of us have to maintain legacy C code bases. Sucks to be us, but what are you going to do? Not testing is not an option, at least not for me. Uh, legacy code is usually not written with testability in mind, which means there's side effects everywhere. And uh, modern C++, I think everybody here is going to agree with me, is a lot better than C. So how can we write our test to C++ to test some legacy C code over there? Uh, now, uh, there is a library that can mock C function CPPU test, but I don't really like it too much because they have design constraints that I don't. Um, it uses a singleton, which is a global variable, uh, all that that entails. It requires linking multiple binaries because it uses the linker to actually link to different implementations. That means you have a bunch of tiny little unit test binaries running all of them as a pain. Uh, the interface is stringly typed. You basically put a string in a hash table somewhere saying, I expect this to be called, and then somebody else on the other side has to say, actually, this was called and puts the string in there. And you actually manually have to implement the mock, which kind of defeats the purpose. And I thought I could do better with macros and template madness. So I called it pre-mock because it uses the preprocessor to mock stuff instead. And it's up there on GitHub. Right, so what is it? Imagine you have a production function called foo and a file called foo.c. Now, this function is calling send. And you don't want to do that because side effects and uh, where you're testing are bad because you want determinism and all the, uh, that good stuff. So contrived example, but lightning talk. It just calls send, ret returns the same thing send does. It passes the file descriptor, it doesn't actually really do anything because it's null, etc. Now, in your test file, you're going to have a block there. The block's there on purpose because of RAII. And that's because if you use the replace macro from my library, you can say replace send and then replace it with this lambda until the end of scope, but only until then. Now, this has good benefits because you don't stomp in any other unit tests that come afterwards that might not care if you send packets or, not, or, or actually do. So only replace the implementation until then. So if I replace send with the uh, um, auto dot 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 because I'm lazy, don't care what you're passing me in, return seven, I can assert that if I call foo with zero, I get back the number seven because all it's doing is returning the return value from send. Now the block ends, I call foo with zero again, now it returns minus one. Why? Because it's calling send from syssocket and zero isn't a valid file descriptor, so you have to go look at error note. The other thing you can do with this if you don't want to pass in the lambda is actually mock it with programmability in mind. So you go auto m equals mock uh, the macro, send is the function you want to uh, mock out. Uh, you set the return value to five. If I call foo with three, I get five back because that's what the return value was. I can also assert that expect called with values and then three and then the other stuff you saw in the slide just there because I passed three to it. I, yeah, I can also do this for multiple return values and then I can expect called with values. There should be a two in expect called there actually. So I expect called twice with values and now I have to pass tuples so I can have multiple parameter lists to pass to this thing. Now all of this is type safe, right? I can't pass in the wrong number of arguments and I can't pass in the wrong type either. That won't compile. How do I do this? Well, um, first you need to actually include the header file because this is a header only library. And what you need to do for every function that you want to be able to mock is three different things. One, you need to uh, use this macro decal mock on send. Um, I'm including this socket so I actually know what send is. That's not a string, that's a symbol. Uh, and then you need to actually implement. This needs runtime support, obviously. But you don't need to write the code because I have a macro to do it for you. So you include the previous header you have. Now you use this different macro called implementmockal default with the send function in there. And then you have to compile your production code with either dash g um, switch every single instance of send to ut underscore send, or you can put that in a header file and then dash include that. So you can, so you have, you need some build system support for this, but this is literally all you have to do, and everything I just showed you just works. Now, notice also what's not here. I'm not telling the system, or the framework in this case, anything about send. I'm not, uh, there's no return type anywhere, there's no argument list. The only thing I can get rid of is that four, and that four is the number of parameters that send takes. And I, I literally can't see any other way of doing this. But you do this, your functions are mocked, everything's nice, and uh, the world is beautiful again. Thanks.